let's talk with Nick in also in California. Lots of CA calls today. Hi, Nick. How can we help you? Hi, Nick. Hi, how are you guys doing? Doing good. good. What's your question for us today? So much like the last caller, I'm a recent ex theist. So nice. Now. Okay. Um, awesome. Thank you. Um, but I do have some questions still that were kind of like lingering on my mind. Um, and it's about near-death experiences. I just kind of want to get your guys' take on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I actually, <laughs> the other day, I was, I was watching a Netflix series called After Death or something like that. And it, it's, a, it's a new Netflix documentary series on near-death experiences. And it's approaching it very much from the History Channel. Woo, look at this cool thing that definitely exists. Aliens. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, all right, give me your best shot. Like, I'm going to watch this first episode and, and, and suspend my disbelief and, like, hear what you've got to say. And it was really disappointing because the, the woman who was the, the focus of this first uh, one was like, well, I fell out of a kayak and was pinned under the water for 30 minutes. And during those 30 minutes, I died. And I know I died because I know it. I wasn't pronounced dead, but I know that I was dead. And I had this experience that lasted all 30 minutes until I was woken up again and pulled out of the water and resuscitated. And... That was that was it. And then we talked, they talked about like what she saw and what she felt and like what what how that influences her belief in God today. But for me, like it 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 kind of encapsulated some of the biggest issues that I have with near-death experiences, which is equating near death with death, first of all, right? If you are nearly dead, then you're not dead, right? <sighs> And so you don't actually know what happens after you die because you haven't died, because people who have have not come back. <laughs> so uh, there's a difference there. And the fact that she wasn't pronounced dead by a physician, right? She was pronounced almost dead when she got to a hospital finally, but her near-death experience was just that, right? It wasn't, I died and came back. It was, I almost died and then I didn't. And here's what my brain did while I was almost dying. Mm -hmm. And the whole argument that, oh, well, it lasted the whole time. I was there for the full 30 minutes. Have you ever had a dream for five minutes that lasted a, a month, right? Where you like get old and you and you like have your, your grandchildren and then you wake up and it's been five minutes. Like your brain doesn't know how to math and how to time, right? So there are so many small issues. I'm Massively distracted by that adorable cat right now. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Never apologize. Never apologize. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. So it kind of just encapsulated a lot of the issues, and I'm wondering where where you're sitting with that. So yeah, it's funny that you mentioned the the lady in the in the kayak because that's actually one of them that I saw. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's good. It's a really popular near-death experience on YouTube as well. It's like one of the main ones that pops up when you type in near-death experiences. She's yeah. like a spine surgeon or something like that. Yeah, she's a doctor. And she's like, everybody makes fun of me because I believe in God because of this experience. And I'm like, well, I'm sorry people are making fun of you, but you're a doctor. You should know these things. Like, okay. When, um, when you say near-death experience, like... I guess there's two ways to view that. And when you first said it, I thought you meant um, like people who are like uh, pronounced brain dead and then recover or, you know, people who die in some sense that we might describe as dead. But then there's also near death as in like you have a car crash and you survive it or, you know, you you fall off something and you just miss hitting your head on something. And then you, because that's also kind of like right. near death in another sense. Yeah or like a car passes by you and you almost get hit or something like that. Right? Yeah. So I've, I've had a situation that could so I actually had one day where I nearly died twice. Uh, one of my friends threw this big stone and it hit off something and it uh, grazed my nose and it was like bigger than my head. Um, and it was going really fast. It was completely crazy. And then later on that afternoon we were swimming in the sea and I'm not, I can't really swim. And I just got sucked into the current and started going out into the sea 
And like, I would have just died then. And my friends like managed to get me back in and stuff. And both at the oh time, I was like 14. And I was like, I nearly died today. And in the sense that was near death. And I know that some people sometimes think maybe less with those examples, like with the rock skimming past my nose, perhaps God steered the rock so it didn't quite hit me. And it can make people feel like, you know, I nearly died and God protected me. And that's, that's often kind of like a one sense near death. But I know another kind of, maybe it's not called near death, but like people who feel like they have actually died and they've gone to heaven and they've come back. Um, this is another argument that people yeah, make like, oh, that, is that more what you were saying? Because what yeah. I think is um, an interesting yeah, way of approaching was more what I'm saying. Yeah. So with the second one, I think it's very interesting to consider like the physical process or what's actually going on in someone when they are dead or dying. Because it's like, I think when we think of dead, we often imagine it's like this binary, you're alive and then you're not alive. And it's just like, oh, they're dead. Mm -hmm. But dying is, it's actually quite hard to, that, like it's a kind of an arbitrary definition of at which point someone is dead. Um, like, you know, you could, a large part of your brain could become damaged and you could still be like functioning in some way, like your kidneys could still be processing and you know, you could still be breathing automatically, but you could be de dead in a, like, brain dead, in a sense. I'm not quite sure what the proper term for that would be. Um, and then you could be in, like, another step along where maybe your automatic function shut down, or you could be another step along. And there's, there's an obvious point where, you know, like, you're just a skeleton now, and all of your fleshy parts are rotted away, and that person is obviously dead, and there's an obviously alive, but there is a point at which we're not quite sure where to draw the line. Different bits of you have died. And, you know, in some senses, bits of you could die and then you, bits of you could come back. Like if your heart stops, you could say someone whose heart stopped is dead, but you can sometimes restart hearts. Right. And then this kind of sounds a bit like fiddly, but it is, it is actually difficult to come up with a strict definition of when right. a person is dead and when they aren't. And yeah. what's interesting right. here is when you're dying... Think. Let me, Sorry. Just, let me just cut in real quick and, and, yeah. and just say that the reason uh, that I would say that it's bothering me, the point that I really kind of wanted to address was um, when people say like, okay, say, say you have like a Buddhist or something like that who's never heard of, of Jesus. Like there's a near-death experience that I saw, right? There, there's a, some, some Buddhist who's never heard of Jesus, has a near-death experience and sees Jesus like that's. That, that kind of baffles me, and I really don't know how to explain that. I know I don't have to explain it, you know, through the lens of skepticism. It should just be, you know, they should have be able to provide evidence for me to evaluate and, and make a decision based off of that. But still, there's something that's compelling about it. it I, I can understand why it's compelling. I guess mm -hmm. for someone to say, I'd never heard of Jesus before, and then I saw Jesus, like that, that kind of sounds good in that sense but like how do they know that they'd never heard of jesus before is that actually like can we verify that claim and then when they said they saw jesus did like they wake up and be like i just saw this thing called jesus and i don't know what it yeah, is all right. if they've never seen they... jesus before how did they know they saw jesus <laughs> yeah unless jesus said that to them but then like what just seems quite likely you know if, when someone says that to me i kind of think well they probably knew what jesus was in their mind and then their brain started to die and then it, it kind of came back and then they interpreted whatever shapes, you know, whatever structures in their brain just decided, oh, that was this thing that we've heard of. Yeah. Or maybe they came back and they said, I saw this glowing figure and it had a beard and uh, it, I think it was like the son of God or something. And they're like, oh, do you mean Jesus? And they're like, right. oh, and about also, Jesus. This, this, idea idea. That nobody, this idea that like, oh, so many people have never heard of Jesus or Christianity. <laughs> it's like, okay, even before the internet, Christians did a really good job of colonizing almost everywhere. So like, it's very <laughs> difficult to prove. And then with like layer that on top of like having access to the internet, like there is no way that so many of these people were like, I didn't even know anything about it. And then I had a, a premonition and now it's all proven to me. It's just, it, it, it smacks of 
conversion stories, testimonies, right? Like we all we all know that if we if we if we grew up in a religious environment, we know the testimony deal, right? And every time you tell it, it gets a little bit bigger, a little bit more yeah. elaborate, and then it's all of a sudden it's like a, a huge miracle, right? And you're like, okay, well, there might be a grain of truth in there. Maybe this person didn't think about Jesus very much and then saw Jesus for some reason in a near death experience, or maybe they saw someone like Katie said that matched the description, you know, in some way and then someone else was like oh clearly this person saw jesus um but i i would be hard pressed to find evidence of people who i could verify had never heard of jesus or christianity before had a near-death experience and then in that near-death experience was confronted by someone who was like yo i'm jesus <laughs> right and, and i think it's also worth pointing out that you like you hear about people like that from christians right but if you go and talk to muslims they'll probably <laughs> find you christians who saw Muhammad and then woke up as a Muslim and you could probably find Buddhists of you know saying the same thing hey there um, was somebody who called in he was a he was a, a, an Egyptian pagan and was like I saw Hecate or Hecate or however you pronounce it like I saw this 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 cat god in my in my living room like okay cool like if we're going if we're going by that like I saw this god then we're still cats. stuck at nothing, right? Like, because everyone has seen every kind of God, so. Mm -hmm. And that's something else I wanted to bring up. Um, like, it's funny because there was one particular near-death experience. I'm pretty sure you guys probably saw it before. It was of the brain surgeon, I believe. He had a near-death experience. He wrote a book on it and everything. But he had a he had a near-death experience, and he didn't even see the Christian God or any Abrahamic religion. Mm -hmm. uh, gods he just was like riding on the butterfly with his sister right he didn't That's adorable type of oh. <laughs> okay and he came back believing in in christianity which doesn't make sense to me when you know it, it doesn't make sense how do you know that whatever yeah. afterlife you were in was you know the christian afterlife if it was indeed the afterlife yeah, yeah, considering when brains are in like their reduced function state, they start hallucinating. Uh, anyway, like that's just a thing that happens that we know about. So why jump to the conclusion that you went to an afterlife with your sister and a giant butterfly? Or <laughs> I mean, like, it's good to know there's giant butterflies in heaven. Yeah. I'm so game. I, like this is the closest I've come to converting to Christianity. <laughs> you can so. ride on giant butterflies, guys. This is this is. I'm important. in. I'm in. All right, you've single-handedly shut down talk heathen. We're believers. <laughs> Um, so here's the thing, Nick, that is such a good, a good okay. example of what we're trying to, to, to talk about here, right? We are so like, it is so easy to manipulate something your brain hallucinated into believing anything, right? Um, so if somebody had a near death experience and was like, I'm riding on a butterfly with my sister and that convinced me that the Christian God is real, then we can throw that out, right? <laughs> Because <laughs> clearly there's no line from point A to point B, which just proves that what we see in near-death experiences, for those who have them, has no direct bearing on something that actually exists and certainly cannot be used to prove that that thing exists. Right. And then I remember uh, Matt saying, you know, if that were true, you know, wouldn't that be unfair to everybody who didn't get a near-death experience? You know, you, God picks these certain people to experience these certain events. Wouldn't that be unfair to, to me who's never had that experience? Well, certainly For, if you um, believe a God is all good, then then sure, that one of those would have to go, right? An yeah, all good it's God a blind or... faith religion. Uh, yeah. But yeah, definitely. If you're given evidence and someone else isn't and everyone's meant to be equal and then the God's meant to love everyone, but it's just like, hey, you get a free pass to heaven and you don't. Like that's right. obviously nonsense. Um, yeah. So Nick, um, we're going to have to move on to the next call, I think. Uh, but do you want to wrap up? Any last thoughts? Um, I think that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. I, I can always call in some other time. And here's the, here's what I leave you with Nick. Um, it sounds like you're doing a lot of research into this specific thing. It sounds like you're doing a lot of, you know, watching people's testimonies, reading about these. 
it's totally okay to put that down and say, I don't know, right? We don't know what happens after we die. We have a pretty good idea because we understand science and how the body works and where consciousness lives in the brain and all of that. So we have a pretty good idea, but we're not 100% sure, at least I'm not, and that's okay. And if somebody comes to you and says, I had a near-death experience and wrote on a butterfly, you can be like, damn, that sounds cool, man. And then <laughs> go on with your life. It's not going to affect the rest of your existence. So if you want to, if this is stressing you out, if you are are feeling like this is not giving to you and, and benefiting you, you can put this down. It is There is no need to totally explain near-death experiences in order to be a good atheist and a good skeptic, right? It's not required of you. So if you want to just stop thinking about it, this is your, you have my permission. You stop thinking about it, put it down. If it's interesting, cool, continue looking at it. If it's stressing you out, you don't need to do it. Yeah, I probably should put it down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank Definitely. you so much for calling in, Nick. All right. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. So apparently, Hecate is Greek and not Egyptian. <sighs> So I'm turning in my host hat after this. <laughs> yeah, and I don't want this to seem like we're saying, oh, it's too scary for us to think about, so run away from it, right? The goal here is to promote positive atheism, and part of that is supporting the mental health and protecting the time of the people who we bring out of theism, right, and who have found their way out. If this is not something that is helping you, like, actually learn stuff, it's not, you're not required to explain everything theists throw at you in order to be an atheist. Someone can say, well, what about this? And you can say, what about it? And move on with your life and that's all that's all the brain power you need to expend um there's a certain a, uh, apologist who seems to like to to compare book lists with people with atheists like well how many books have you read and have you read all the books that i read and the ones that i like best and the ones i think and it's just this this it reeks of self-importance to be able to be like hey i am going to dominate your thoughts and your mind and your time tr and you need to let me or else you're being dishonest or you're not answering the, the right questions, right? It's not required. We can do what we want. <laughs> also from like the kind of the raw skeptic point of view, like the, the way I kind of would consider this, I don't, I don't think it's that difficult. Like if every single person who ever had a near death experience come back and said, I was just riding on a giant butterfly with my sister. Like if every single person did that, then I would be like, okay, as an atheist, potentially I need to explain this because there's something here. Yeah. Like even if it just happens that your brain always conjures butterflies because it's a human evolution, whatever. But that isn't the case. What the case is, is that some people have near death experiences come out more religious some people come out less less religious some people switch from one religion some sweet people switch to another and it to me it just seems like we don't necessarily really know what's going on but this isn't this isn't causing a problem for me as a as an atheist because like the skeptical thing to do is say well we don't know why people come up with the things they come up with right i mean maybe we do but i don't know that and that's all i just don't know and it's just not important to me Exactly. Or you're dead for 11 hours and you didn't see the ancestral tree with all of your relatives and you come back and you realize that your whole life was a lie and you get super depressed until Chakotay comes to you and tells you that it's all okay. Um, and, and says, I am actually Egyptian after all and the Greeks are wrong. 